Hi everyone, this is Taylor Green with Custom Cloud Dev, and today I want to just go over a example where if you were to need to launch a flow from a process and then pass in variables. So the idea would be, let's say you don't want to use Process Builder for whatever the scenario is, and you need to access a related object as well as the object that you're launching from. So what we'll do in this one is we will launch the process where we're going to create the variables um, in a flow, launch those, um, pass them in through the flow, through the process into the flow, and then uh, we'll just do some minor uh, get records and an update. Um, so yeah, here's how it would go. Um, and if any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. Okay, so. We're going to do this example using a contact. Um, so we're on a contact, and then we'll use the related record being the account. So for instance, um, I have some test fields here. So test text, description, um, and then I have this related uh, test account. Um, so I filled in the annual revenue field. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a variable from this process to the flow, which grabs the account, um, this value here. Um, and then we will combine it with something from the contact as well, and we'll update it into the description field. So I haven't tested this yet, so I'm just going to walk through what it looks like, and we'll see how it goes. So first, uh, first let me actually go with, we create the flow first because we need the variables um, available when we create the process builder. So to start, I did um, a get contact records. Um, we're going to say we're ID uh, equals record ID. Um, so that's one variable that I created. Record ID is just going to be a text and make sure uh, available for input. Then also we're going to need another variable. Um, available for input and text and you can just create those by new resource resource type variable make sure you use a text data type and then it will also allow you to uh, say available for input so I have these two variables that are that I've created um, the first one is getting used in a uh, get records get or ID contact or ID equals record ID that's going to be our contact ID um, so let's get records, then I'm going to do another one, uh, get object uh, account, where ID equals account ID, and we're going to store just the first record, store all fields, even though we only need that one field that we mentioned. Then I'm doing an update, so update contact, where ID equals record ID, and then we're going to set a value, description equals, and then I have a formula here. So let's look at that formula. So this is just going to be the language field from the contact, get contact record languages, and um, a text wrapper of the annual revenue. That's just because this is a, uh, a number, and you can't add text and numbers. So you just wrap it in text, and it'll give you a text string. OK, so let me check that something is in the language field on the contact first. So we'll just say English. So what I'm expecting to happen is, well, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to the, the process now. So we have this flow. It's active. It'll tell you if there's any issues. Usually if you have an issue with your formula, it won't let you activate it. So um, this one's ready to go. Then on the contact, I created a uh, process, and it is, um, this is actually a name from a past example. What we're going to do as the criteria is the account ID is changed. So when we're on the contact and we change the related object, which is the account in this case, then we're going to launch a flow as the action. And um, that's called our test variable flow. And then it will let, it'll let you set flow variables based on the ones that are in your flow that are uh, available for input. So we have two of those here. So back on the process, we have record ID, 
Um, we're going to pass in the contact ID because we're on the contact uh, process, contact. And then the account ID, which is related, so contact.account ID, we're passing that into account ID. So those allow us to um, reference the contact and the related account. So uh, let's give it a test run. The process is active. I have values in the fields. So to trigger this, um, I need to start at the contact, change to a different test household. Okay. Okay, so we see we have one part here, and I bet this test household that I added here, this other one doesn't have a value, so let me try to test. Let's see, I have quite a few test households. So this one, let's see if it has an annual revenue. It does not. So let's put a value here, and then and go back. Okay, so right now you see it's putting in the language, which is from here, but I want to just show it uh, putting the value from the account object. So let me see. Test household. Okay, so we don't see that it's pulling in the... Okay, so this is another test household without annual revenue. So let's see, we're not there yet. Okay, contact, anonymous, okay, so anonymous household has annual revenue, annual revenue, 50,000, and description, English, 50,000. So what's happening when we change these households or the account value, it's triggering this process that the account ID is changed, then the immediate action is launch a flow where it has record ID, account ID, account ID, account ID, or contact ID, account ID passed in to these two variables, each of which is being used as condition ID equals record ID, and then get that record um, ID equals account ID, and then get that record. Those are two variables. Then I have every field on those two records accessible for me to do what I want. So I'm just going to update the description on the contact using a formula which uses uh, one field from the gotten contact record and uh, one field from the, um, the received account record. So I hope this is helpful. Um, it's just a quick and handy way to play with variables between processes and flows. Thank you.